We're going to start this video by being very clear about something. Yes, I'm going to be talking about the Christian Bible, but I'm going to try not to disparage it or intentionally poke fun at it, nor tell any of you at home what to believe or what not to believe, because that's not really my business or my role. However, when it comes to the Bible and the role of Christianity in the world as a whole, many people will sometimes take things at face value with what the Bible says and implies or what it has said and implied, about it without actually reading what the Bible says. And when that happens, there are misrepresentations that have to be addressed. So with that in mind, here now are 20 things you didn't know about the Bible. Number 20. The Looks of Angels I'll begin with one that has definitely been taken advantage of in popular culture, because regardless of whether it's video games, TV shows, movies, or comic books, when you think about angels, as in the denizens of heaven that serve God, you perhaps think of humanoid-like beings with shining wings, and we can only think of examples of them being portrayed that way in pop culture. I mean, just look at shows like Lucifer or Constantine franchise in DC Comics, because when you think of angels, you probably think of them as being somewhat human. Even some animation and live-action adaptations of the Bible have put that picture in people's minds. But this is what the Bible says angels really looked like, and it's complicated. First, when angels were first drawn in our world, they did look human, but they did not have wings. That actually came later. Furthermore, if you look at actual angel descriptions, they don't have wings, or at least are not specifically stated to have had them. And then, not unlike other beings, there are classes of angels, like with the cherubim that protected the Garden of Eden. Not only were they said to not be human, but they were said to have four faces all of which were faces of animals. Then there are the seraphim, which are hailed as the highest class of angel. When a prophet viewed these angels, they were said to have six wings, and some of those wings were said to hide their faces in humility as God approached. They were claimed to be humanoid, but there is some debate about that. The Ophanim are said to be the freakiest of the angels because they don't look like man or beast, but golden wheels that are covered in eyeballs. That's literally how the prophet Ezekiel described them. Here's another thing to think about. Many angels were considered warriors in God's army. They were revealed to humans in such a way multiple times. Furthermore, in classic angel meets human interactions, one of the first things they often say, including the Virgin Mary, is do not be afraid. Why would they make such claims when they're supposed to be beautiful entities that look just like us? That's why many feel that humanity, possibly in a bit of arrogance, reworked the legend of angels so that they would seem more like them and thus potentially become angels when the time arrived to ascend to heaven. And let's be honest, humanity is known to be rather vain and make things all about themselves. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Names of Women Have you ever read The Hobbit or Lord of the Rings by Tolkien? One thing that you'll notice in those books is that many have called out that there isn't a lot of female characters of note. Now, that's why when they made the Hobbit films, they added new female characters or did more scenes with females that the audience knew with, like Galadriel. But you want to know something that's equally as ironic? The Bible had an even worse habit. They would mention plenty of women, but they didn't always say their names. Why is that so? Well, we do know that there were special women in the first person within the Old and New Testaments like Ruth and Mary and Martha, but why were others titled things like Jephthah's daughter, Manoah's wife, King Lemuel's mother, and so on? Well, to answer that, you have to understand the culture that was taking place in that part of the world during those days. While it is absolutely true that women were given the shaft, especially when it came to certain abilities that men had with marriage and divorce, the naming of things was more about honor and pride than it was really about anything else. 
In this case, society during those times had people priding themselves not only on their individual efforts, but because of the family that they were in. Family was everything to a lot of people, and so to be connected to a key person in that family would carry a whole lot of weight. To that end, both men and women had the ability to both bring honor to their family or even to shame them. And that all being said, society took this a bit farther with how women were often viewed as beings of potential shame and that their ideal nature was to be submissive and basically have very few, if any, rights that the men had. But did God want that? Well, no. If you look at the book of Genesis, God talks about men and women in equal terms, including how both were made in the image of God. Plus, to those that actually read the stories, many of the women in the Bible like Ruth and Esther and Mary, and many more, were seen as kind, compassionate, brave, and willing to do things that men oftentimes just refuse to do. In other words, it's not because of God that women were subjugated and made lesser. That was actually society, and specifically the men. I know, it's a shocker, right? Number 18. How Many Sales Now, I know that I went a bit long with the last two entries, so I'll keep this next one a little bit shorter because it's a really simple thing to talk about. When you discuss book sales in the world, both in the modern time and in the ancient world, the Bible will come out on top every time. It is true that the Bible was once something that not everyone could hold on to, but with the arrival of the Gutenberg Bible, which is the oldest Bible in print, it gave people the ability to print out these books on demand, and naturally, people wanted to have it. By 1815, 1.3 billion Bibles had been printed. Fast forward to now, and even the Guinness Book of World Records cannot confirm how many Bibles have been sold. The belief is that it's between 5 to 7 billion copies, which would mean that there have been almost as many Bibles as there are people currently on Earth. But don't forget, people do sometimes need multiple copies of the Bible, especially if they have families or they lose or damage the one they had. Still though, it's an incredible feat and it proves just how much that Christianity dominates the modern world. So no matter how big your favorite series has sold, the Bible has no doubt sold more. Number 17. The LGBTQ Plus Community Yeah, I'm gonna be very, very careful on this one, of course, because I do know that this is a major cornerstone of certain beliefs, not only in the religious community, but the political community and more. And I don't want to start a comment war, so I'm going to be careful with what I say. The important thing to note here is that there are sections of the Bible that do talk about the LGBTQ plus community in some kind of way, including certain specific verses like Leviticus 18.22 and 20.13. Not to mention passages in both the Old and New Testaments about certain actions that should be discouraged, but this is where things also get tricky. First off, due to how many times the Bible has been translated over the years and the languages like Greek that sometimes have many versions of a single word, interpretation has factored into a lot of people's beliefs over time. Plus, as I've already shown you, humanity has gone and tailored the message of the Bible over the years to fit their own desires and needs, and that goes far beyond what happened with the angels. Furthermore, as many have attested to, if you do look at the words of God and Jesus in the two testaments, you'll find that they never specifically strike down things like gay marriage or being transgender or anything like that. There are so many kids in foster homes that straight people abandon and gay couples adopt. But instead, they simply focus on actual sins that they felt could exclude people from heaven, and they clearly spelled those out, but anything tied to the LGBTQ plus community was not in those words. Furthermore, if you look at the guidance by God and Jesus, you will also notice that they have multiple times said things that involve all people and not only people of a certain community or orientation. The biggest one being, love thy neighbor as thyself. They never said anything about not loving your gay neighbor or only respecting your straight neighbor or partner. Not to mention, for everyone's talk about how the sanctity of marriage is important to God, there are men like Solomon who had 700 wives and tons upon tons of concubines. And yet he's revered as a wise man instead of being a sinner. And finally, and arguably most important, as noted in Matthew 7 verses 1 through 3, 
For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall also be judged. And with what measure ye measure, you shall also be measured again. So, if we're going by the Bible's teachings, it really shouldn't matter who's straight or not, or what relationships that they have, because it's not for us to judge, it's not our business, and that's up to God and God alone. Number 16. Were Key Figures Jewish? Stepping away from politics for now, we will discuss a key question that many Christian historians have been debating for quite some time. When we think about the Christian faith, we do know that it was birthed in the land that would be called Israel, and as that was God's chosen people. Those who were from that area are Jewish or called Jews. However, by that same token, and by the history that the Bible clearly defines, doesn't that also mean that certain key biblical figures weren't Jewish, as that nation had not been set up yet? The question specifically involves people like Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, who were the fathers of the nation by all accounts. Yet, if you read those accounts, they weren't Jews. They were actually Hebrew by lineage, but they were not Jewish. I know it's kind of confusing. Abraham came from another place that was not Israel or Judah, and so thus he was not a Jew. Isaac was Abraham's son, and so thus he was not a Jew. Jacob was Isaac's son, and he had 12 sons, only one of which was named Judah, and in the native tongue, the Hebrew word for Jewish means son of Judah, or descendant of Judah. So by that token, Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham, despite being the fathers of the nation, were not actually Jewish. They were the trio that helped to make the Jewish people, and thus that's where the confusion can be seen. The irony is that despite all of this being spelled out rather clearly in the Bible, a lot of people still do preach that they were Jewish, even though they weren't. Number 15. The Creation of All in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's how the Bible begins, word for word. Well, in most interpretations and translations anyway. The point here is that the creation story is one of the most important chronicles in the Bible because it's the literal story of us in our beginning. The Bible even said that the universe and thus the earth was without form and that he shaped it to be what we have now. However, some people also believe that there are contradictions within the first two chapters of Genesis, where the Bible says originally that man, you know, like Adam, was created on the sixth day, and yet in chapter two, he's created before the animals of the earth? So what exactly is going on here? Well, as I talked about previously, it is all about your interpretation. Mainly, people have misinterpreted the past and present tenses of words. So, in chapter 2, it is stated in some versions that God created Adam and then created the animals and brought them to him, when instead the proper interpretation is that God had already made the animals and then once Adam was made, the animals were then brought to him for naming. As you possibly have guessed, not everyone's on board with this idea, but all it takes is one single word to be mistranslated for an entire sentence and a, really an entire book to be mucked up. And that's what many advocates and scholars, including ones that I looked up for this video, have noted. So, based on what the Bible wrote, there is no contradiction, supposedly, in the creation story. Number 14. Who wrote the Bible? Ah, yes, the age-old question that also gets a whole lot of answers depending on who you ask, along with what they interpret them to be. Here, we're going to take a more straightforward approach and answer it in the most basic of ways possible. The answer is a whole lot of people. And just as important, it wasn't written all in one place or period as you would likely surmise. We all know about some of the authors because of their prominence in certain chapters or books that were named after them, like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we also know that the Apostle Paul wrote several books of the New Testament and addressed them to certain people or places. Those are the easy ones to cite. Others, though, are not quite as obvious, unless you dive much deeper in, like how Moses allegedly wrote multiple books. The problem is, there are several books in the Bible, including ones like Judges and Esther and Hebrews, that don't have confirmed authors. 
Plus, some books might have been started by one writer and then finished by one of their own followers or scribes or somebody else. At best guess, there were at least 40 authors who had helped to write the version of the Bible that Christians will cite as the true Word of God. So you could say, like God intended, it was a team effort. Number 13. Death Defying Men the concept of death goes far beyond the Christian faith or any other belief system in the world, but what has often mystified people is that the Bible will tell us tales of people who have escaped death, or in the case of Jesus and Lazarus, were resurrected after a clear death. But there are two men in the Bible that have clearly been stated to have never died natural deaths because God willed it to be that way. The first of these is named Enoch. And within Genesis chapter 5, it was written that Enoch had walked with God, and then he was gone, because God took him away, presumably to heaven to be with him. The most prominent death-defying act, however, was the prophet Elijah. He was one of the greatest prophets, according to the text, and after serving God faithfully, a chariot of fire came into the world, and Elijah rode it up to heaven. It's curious that only these two men had such a fate, but it also proves that life is special and not everyone is going to get a special chariot ride or a walk with God. Number 12. King Solomon Now, I talked about him before, but I'll go even deeper into the tale of Solomon, which is clearly spelled out in the Bible in a lot of ways. Because if you ask the average Christian, they will note that Solomon was the son of David. He was also a wise king who had ruled for a long time and was revered for his wisdom. That wisdom, according to the Bible, came from God himself, who had granted Solomon a wish, and he used that wisdom quite well and led Israel to great things for a time. Can you hear the catch coming, though? As I noted earlier, Solomon had 700 wives, and that was not ordained by God. In fact, as 1 Kings notes, God warned the entire nation of Israel about not marrying the women of the pagan tribes that were surrounding them. And yet Solomon fell in love with basically every single woman there was, marrying them or having them as a partner. He had over a thousand concubines in his harem, and because of that, he fell out of favor with God, and that was when Israel had yet another downturn in fortune. It's fair that he is remembered for his wisdom because he did show it often, but he just wasn't wise enough to get over himself, and that would doom him and his nation in the end. Seems to be some kind of moral tale in there, doesn't it? Number 11. Talking Animals In all works of fiction, there are animals that can talk. Some are for comedy, like a donkey that is the best friend of an ogre, while others are there to show the intelligence of life as a whole and how humans aren't the only smart things around. But in the Bible, there are two cases in which animals talk to humans in their own tongue. One you can probably guess, but can you guess the other? The first is obviously when Lucifer, aka the devil, snuck into the Garden of Eden as a snake and spoke to Eve about taking a bite out of the fruit on the Tree of Life. This is why we have some negative connotations attached to the serpent and how sneaky they can be. The other is in the story of Balaam. Balaam was disobeying God by going to a certain place, and the donkey upon which Balaam rode was able to see an angel that was willing to kill the man on God's orders if he went too close. And so, that donkey, three times, would save its master by going in a different direction. Balaam was furious each and every time, and he struck the donkey, and that's when God allowed the donkey to speak, where it noted how it never failed him before, so why would it do it now? Realizing this truth, God showed Balaam the angel and thus revealed how the donkey had saved his life. Not bad for a talking donkey, huh? Number 10. Satan and Lucifer I've already used the latter of these names before as Lucifer is known to be the angel name that we all associate with the devil known as Satan. Lucifer even means light bringer in Latin, a nice name for God's favorite angel, except that wasn't his real name. That was a translation choice that people made when making the Bible. So then, what was his real name? Well, nobody really knows. It's never said in the original translation, and even Satan is not his name as it means the adversary. So yeah, we never really knew his name, and that might have been part of his punishment for betraying God. Number 9. The Look of Jesus Now here's another example of how humanity's vanity is at work. 
If you think about what Jesus looks like based upon everything that you've seen in the past at church or maybe in adaptations of the Bible, you'll tend to see him to be rather light-skinned, have long brown hair, and sometimes even have an aura about him. But the twist here is, we don't really have any true description of what he looks like. The Bible never goes into details about that. Equally as important, in the four Gospels, it was stated in several ways that Jesus didn't stand out from any other Jewish man around him, which is why Judas had to give him a kiss in the garden the night that he was arrested. Then, if you go to the book of Revelation, it said that his skin had a darker hue and that the hairs on his head were white as wool and his eyes were like flames of fire. Either way, it's a far cry from how many people have drawn him to be, and he most definitely was not a white man. He likely looked like many of the Jewish men of the time period. Number 8. The Longest Word This one's a bit of a hilarious thing that only some of you are going to care about, but it's something that many of you have possibly thought about at one time or another. What is the longest word in the Bible? Now, as you like to often point out, I mispronounce a lot of things, but I'm going to try my best here. Maher Shalal Hashbaz. That's got 18 characters, if you don't want to count, and it's the longest word in the Bible and was the name of one of the prophet Isaiah's sons. The name was given by the Lord through a prophecy that warned Israel and Syria of the destruction that would be brought about by the Assyrians. The name translates to speed the spoil, hasten the plunder. Names are often powerful things in the Bible, and this is another example of that. Number 7. Unicorns One of the biggest questions of the Bible are that of certain animals that we do know were on Earth at one point in time. You know, like dinosaurs that aren't technically mentioned in the Bible, and of creatures that we're pretty sure didn't exist and yet are mentioned in the Bible. Like what, you may ask? Well, how about unicorns? Yes, in the book of Job, God is talking with Job and using animals to help describe certain tasks that man is meant to do and the help that they may need at times. God mentions the unicorn as a symbol of strength, using their horn to talk about why they're powerful and why they wouldn't serve man for agricultural needs. So, was God lying to Job? Well, no. Most would agree that he was describing an animal that was real and that the word unicorn is another translation glitch. However, it should be noted that there are plenty of horned animals in the world and many of them are extinct, so there may have well been a unicorn-like creature that God was referencing at the time. Number 6. The Wise Men in the tale of the birth of Jesus, one of the key points was when the three wise men came and gave him gifts that would help them on their journey. Now, the story was heavily distorted over the years. First and foremost, there weren't exactly three of them. The Bible never says three wise men or magi. It simply refers to them coming and bringing their gifts. The other misinterpretation is of their status. A lot of scholars feel that they weren't only random wise men, but they were kingmakers, they may have been kings themselves, and they may have been astrologers. They were in great number, and that's why King Herod did not try to follow them to Jesus or attempt to get revenge upon them. As for what happened after they met Jesus, well, many believe that they went to spread the word of his coming, thus further serving him while not being right next to him. Number 5. Jesus the Carpenter Here's another one that some will be mad about. Most people like noting that Jesus was a carpenter like his father because it further shows off his humble origins and how even Christ had a day job before he began preaching, which you will recall took place majorly in his 30s. However, some believe that this is a mistranslation and that he was more of a contractor or a builder versus a straight up woodworker. It's not an impossible assumption, as not everything was made of wood at that time, plus it also still gives him a working man's job that people can appreciate. Number 4. Stealing the Bible This is another funny one. Earlier I talked about how the Bible was the most bought book in the world, but it's also said to be the most stolen. According to multiple sources, which includes the New York Times, people steal the Bible more than any other book. Apparently one reason for this is that they feel the book should be free, since it's a religious text and not something that's meant to be used for profit. Now, I can understand the logic in that. The prosecutors going after those people, however, they probably won't. They don't have a sense of humor like I do. Number 3. The Geneva Bible Because of all the translations and editions of the Bible over the years, there are several key Bibles 
that have been made throughout history that have been honored and documented. Now, I talked about one previously, like the Gutenberg, which was the first truly printed Bible, but another key one is the Geneva Bible. The Geneva Bible was the first one in English to add numbered verses. It was also one of the first to include extensive commentary notes that many of you likely have in your copy right now. The twist is that King James, who obviously made the King James version of the Bible, didn't like this and he tried to ban it. However, people really did love that version and it helped to shape his interpretations later on. Number 2. No Original This is one where it should be obvious, but you likely never thought about it in detail. Every version of the Bible we have is based upon copies and rewrites, along with translations, and to that end, we don't have any true sacred text of the original Bible because it just doesn't exist. Part of this is because the various books were compiled into the Bible well after things were made and the life of Jesus and others were done. Even things like the legendary Dead Sea Scrolls are just one version of the Bible and not the original. Number 1. Heavens Talk to any Christian about the afterlife and they'll happily describe various versions of heaven that have been taught to them, like how there are streets made out of gold, or we'll get to meet everyone who's ever lived, including the saints and disciples who worked with Jesus, and a giant house where everyone has a room to live in. But did you know there's actually three heavens described in the Bible by several different people? Now don't worry, there's not a tiered system in heaven. Instead, the man that wrote about these three heavens, like David and Paul, were describing layers to God's creation. Referencing the atmosphere, the universe, and the layer above all that, the third heaven, which is where God resides. Or, to phrase it another way, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Well, that's all from the history and texts of the Christian Bible and the various things that you might not have known about. Were you amazed by all the clarifications and explanations that were given? And do you feel that you have a better understanding now? Maybe you still have some questions. Go ahead and let me know all about it in the comments down below. Check out the other cool things on the screen. And I will see you next time.